Hey, what's up guys? This is the TP-Link Deco X68. I'm gonna do a longer term review on this thing. I've had it for about seven months and I've been using it for about two months, a little bit more than that on and off because I'm continuously testing other mesh Wi-Fi systems. However, since I've moved, I have faster internet. I've also done a local area speed test server so I can find out its maximum speeds. And I've also done new range tests because I typically get more range now because of where I am now. So, starting off, this is a tri-band mesh Wi-Fi 6 system. So what does that mean? A tri-band is when it has three bands. So a 2.4 gigahertz and two 5 gigahertz bands. So that's different from a dual band because it has an additional band. So a dual band has a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz. So the tri-band having an additional frequency, what's the advantage of that? Well, there are essentially two advantages. So the first one being that because there's an additional frequency, it allows more Wi-Fi devices to connect to it without it slowing down as much, or it typically gives better wireless backhaul speeds. Uh, so what is wireless backhaul? Wireless backhaul is when you have your main one hooked up to your modem acting as your router, and the secondary one, if you just plug it into the power port, it wirelessly talks to this one, expanding your Wi-Fi coverage. However, in a tri-band system, typically because there are three different bands, either it's using it as a dedicated, in this case, I believe it's actually using all three bands. So because there's an additional band, it, it can talk on more of the bands and it typically results in better wireless speeds, or, or I should say less of a slowdown on the secondary ones. All right, it's also a mesh Wi-Fi system, which means that you can get two or more devices which expand your Wi-Fi coverage. Really, they're just Wi-Fi den zone killers because um, essentially this is the same SSID, the same Wi-Fi name. So if you take your Wi-Fi device, you connect to the network, you're essentially connecting to one whole network. So if you're closer to this one, it'll automatically switch you here. If you're closer to this one, it'll automatically switch you here. So no matter where you are in your home, these things will optimize which devices connect to what, so you're good to go. Something that you don't have to worry about. This all happens automatically. Let's actually talk about the Ethernet port. So it comes with two Ethernet ports, They're, they both support gigabit and they are both auto sensing, meaning you can hook up one to your modem or the other one to your modem, doesn't matter, it will automatically detect it. And then the one that's empty, you can hook up to your computer or your other device or to this one to create a wired backhaul. Or if you need more Ethernet ports, you can hook up this to an unmanaged switch and then from there, go to this one or any other devices. Okay. So jumping into the speed test, my internet speeds are now 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So no matter how fast this thing can go, if I'm accessing the internet, it's limited by my internet service provider. So those speeds that I told you guys. Now, when I do a speed test on my computer that's hooked up via ethernet to this, I typically get those speeds but on Wi-Fi devices like the Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device, and the iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device, typically there's a loss in speeds because I'm on wireless now. With the iPhone 12 Pro, I get 660 down and 286 up, and all the speeds I say are gonna be in megabits per second, not to be confused by megabytes per second. So one byte is equal to eight bits. That's the conversion rate. With my Pixel 5 Wi-Fi 5 device, I get 486 down, 288 up. So this is an internet speed test using speedtest.net. However, this thing can in theory go faster if we isolate the router by itself. So how do we do that? Well, we create a local speed test server which means that I get rid of my ISP, my internet service provider, and I get rid of my public speed, not my, I get rid of the public speed test server. And the reason for that is because the internet service provider is not always going to give you those advertised speeds. And in addition, the public speed test server is going to be, is typically used by a lot of people or companies at the same time. So they can't always guarantee those perfect speeds. So, by making my computer the speed test server, I essentially go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router, and my computer can go faster than what this router can support. So in theory, I'm giving you guys the max speeds that this thing can do. So 
To be consistent with all my other Mesh Wi Fi videos, I'm going to use the same option numbering scheme. So, starting with option one, we're going to use a single router by itself. So, just because it's a Mesh Wi Fi system doesn't actually mean I need to use more than one. So, I can actually just get this and use it by itself, and it'll act just like a normal router because it is a router. So, with that, when I connect my, when I'm close to it with my iPhone 12 Pro Wi Fi 6 device, I get 812 down, 687 up. With the Pixel 5, I get 632 down, 401 up. So, skipping option two, because option two is when I hook up a router to a non dedicated non router. So, in this case, since these are both routers, even though only the main one is acting as the router, the secondary one on the same network acts as an access point when you hook it up. Option three is called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul and what that means is there's an ethernet cable going from the secondary one to the main one either through an unmanaged switch or without an unmanaged switch. Essentially there's an ethernet cable going from the secondary one to the main one. Now in this case I essentially get the same speeds with both devices as option one when I'm closer to the secondary one. And option number four is wireless backhaul. So this is the part that typically tri-bands do a little bit better. In this case, I got 496 down and 323 up with the Wi-Fi 6 device and 521 down, 361 up with the Wi-Fi 5 device. So in the case of a dual band, it would typically be slower than that. So moving on to range test, at 20 feet away using the same devices, the iPhone got 555 down 646 up and the Pixel 5 got 481 down 558 up. Um, there, there was a bit of a drop but still pretty good speeds. At 50 feet I go outside my place and there are some stucco walls and stuff so you can see that there is more of a speed drop and you could start seeing that Wi-Fi 6 is really doing a lot better than Wi-Fi 5. So we get all the way up to 180 feet. Granted at 180 feet this was essentially not usable because it was starting to disconnect and I barely was able to do the speed test. But considering the price of this thing, I would say it does fairly well. Now moving on to the TP-Link app, that's one of my favorite apps. This specifically uses the Deco app. If you use the TP-Link router, they use the Tether app. They, they're both very similar to each other, but they give you all the central choices. So you could customize the Wi-Fi names, turn off 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz and create a guest network and, um, some other customizations. It doesn't give you as many options as ASUS. ASUS typically gives you the most options, gives you a whole bunch of customizability. But with this one, it's a very clean interface. And I've used this thing, again, for about two or so months uh, consistently, well, on and off. And it's been very, very good. So no drops in connections, very stable. It updates, uh, everything's good to go, so very, happy with the Deco X68. The app itself is also really good. So generally speaking, I'm very happy with the TP-Link Deco X68. And as a budget tri-band system, I highly recommend this thing. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button. If you guys have questions or comments, let me know in the comment sections below. One thing I should also mention is on wireless backhaul, you could use the two ethernet ports of these to connect to devices and it'll still connect to your network. Granted, you would be operating at the lower speeds on this guy if you're connected to this Y when this is wirelessly connected to this one. So that's one of the questions I typically get asked often. Anyways, if you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comment section as well. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.